Hello, in this video, I want to start a new series talking a little bit about what the cap K debate is going to look like on the worker strike resolution for LD. I think that this is a really interesting place to talk about like the role of the cap K because I feel like this is a really a testament to see like how variable cap K teams can get from outside of what has usually been the norm. I think that this resolution is really, really interesting for this type of debate because I feel like so normally a lot of cap teams are really forced to kind of sit in like the same old arguments about just why understanding historic materialism is good or why like vertical organizing relationship to policy union organizing all those types of things are good and i don't think that those versions of cap k arguments are really that viable in this resolution because the resolution allows the state to endorse such a general strike and so i think that although you can still make arguments about verticalism and make arguments about like specific types of like organizational tactics, there's still a lot of room to be made up in terms of trying to figure out like how you can separate that from a lot of the arguments the teams are gonna be making about how they access the worker strike, how they're able to destroy capitalism in their own sense, and how they're able to kind of win that the worker strike is like essential to the way in which we're able to like transition outside of capitalism for like a host of reasons. And so I really think that the type of thing that gets rewarded on this uh, resolution is gonna be a lot about your ability to be historically specific and really nuanced with the th type of argument you choose to make and the way that you're making them when you're trying to figure out your alternatives what like our uh, arguments or methods you might want to do outside of the resolution etc and so in this video for the intro to the cap k versus uh policy affirmatives on or versus uh, the cap k just generally on the worker strike resolution this particular video i want to talk about what i think are some of the most central arguments that makes the cap k viable on this resolution and kind of brings a problematic for the resolution as a whole and then i want to talk a little bit about some of the main ways that this argument can be used on the affirmative and on the negative um, and so when we're first just kind of thinking about like what some of the most central arguments that are really going to be uh, crucial I really think that uh, a lot of the arguments have to be about like why a state-based form of like Marxism communism basically mimics the, the like colonial violence that kind of like separates our understanding of normative Marxism from things like racial capitalism I feel like the arguments for the worker strikes have a really hard time answering racial capitalism as an angle against uh, a lot of the type of arguments that they want to make about like why the particular uh, theorizing from the like perspective of like wage labor could be like wrong and doesn't allow us to understand how dispossession whether colonial or slavery based can create the conditions for like how we understand like capitalism and industrialization now and so a lot of the stuff that I think that you can kind of make and centralize your arguments are are about why the kind of like limited view of capitalism is something that like happens as antagonistic to solely the worker kind of only allows a vacuum understanding of like what violence is and like what types of social locations are really like located when you're like theorizing capitalism and also doesn't allow us to think about evolutions on Marxism that change how we think about our relationship to things like the lump and proletariat and the way in which various forces of criminalization change the way we even think about the perspective of workers. I think that, that there's a really interesting argument to be made about the way in which the kind of idea of calcifying the right for workers to strike uh, fundamentally limits the ability for the Olympic proletariat to be seen as an active force of engagement and as an active force of resistance. And I think that that can be a really strong argument to make against a lot of these uh, affirmatives that attempt to say that they kind of like lead to all these other revolutions or types of movements or to even make as a kind of uniqueness argument for why the resolution doesn't really allow a particular conversation about like the way in which the, way, the ways in which like racialization has changed our like understanding and accumulation of capital. And I think that when you think about things like our prisoners wage labor considering the fact that they are forced to do work based off of their like B being in prison right like is like their right to strike still recognized what does that look like and how does it change like the way in which we think about what a human rights framework looks like when it runs into like th really re having to rethink and figure out like what are kind of the central like bodies that are affected by the worker strike I feel like a lot of the arguments that you then want to make on the affirmative and the negative are really about the ways that you can diversify the methodologies that you're really using I think that the over dependence on like a uh, vertical kind of like organized movement that is able to like uh, clearly um, and 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 through uh, this kind of like strict structure able to create this kind of like concrete political change and I really think that the better way for you to start organizing a lot of your arguments if you want to read the cap on the affirmative or the negative on this resolution is to start looking into a lot more anarchist readings a lot more horizontal organizing diagonal organizing things that are like strictly anti-statist uh, organizations for like how we're thinking about capitalism um, and the relationship that movements must have to capitalism and their antagonistic position to the state as a whole I think that going like 
like really far into just like a lot of the writing that like black revolutionaries that have been like talking about and moving communism for so long have so much to kind of like put in in this area in terms of being able to like specifically speak to why the history of being able to be recognized by the state has been such a parasitic force the ability to promote militancy to promote self-sustaining communities that are not dependent on the way in which we relate to the state and i feel like at that level you also have so many arguments to make about why the over focus on kind of like wage labor takes out all of the kind of like environmental factors for like what it actually looks like for uh such a pro uh, uh such an enterprise to produce violence right like if workers strike companies can appease workers but that doesn't apply to for instance communities that are upset with their communities being polluted with there being like unhealthy medical conditions that are created by the like existence of factories etc in their communities and i feel like there are so many good arguments to then make down that line about why the particular idea of how we're able to like glamorize or how we're able to make iconographic the idea of this kind of like uh waged worker strike that's like universal and um kind of like beautifully um connected between all of these peoples misunderstands the ways in which the very frame of like the worker strike under a human rights framework requires a kind of like precise examining of what is legitimized as like a strike or a battle over labor what is defined or calcified as a worker and what their kind of like ability and limitations are in terms of what a strike looks like strikes are normally defined by like the refusal to work right the refusal to kind of like invest in these types of institutions but it also doesn't respond to the ways in which like uh, militancy and militant forms of protecting various types of communities from the same types of conditions also require you know the ways in which like the police become militarized the government's use of militarization etc all of which contribute to like the inability to think about like the worker strike as like something that like is identifiable as the sole kind of movement for how we organize things hopefully this kind of like sets the stage for like what you're thinking about in terms of the type of negative and affirmative arguments you can make throughout the resolution and hopefully you're tuning in for more videos thanks